One day I'll catch a break. Maybe it'll bring us closer. Speak. Quickly. Shook. You believe you can survive without me? As you say, do not keep me waiting. If Yankee patrolling these wilds is an unexpected surprise, whatever they seek, they'll not hesitate to kill us if we stand in their way. With pleasure. Lead on. condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Thank you. any effect. Oh, Mr. have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy. And from an early age, could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries. The Goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse. And later, even my lover. I am, after all, the villain of the tale. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. Inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. Yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. He almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. Fractured, 
then shattered and all magic was lost to the mortal realms until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? You know me. My gestures can never be grand enough. I'm certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread room. Bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no creatures, only a swirling mass of blackest weed pulses. Its teeth, its claws. It's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And God says it ever hungry. What is it? What do you see? Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. I know. All of this. It must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. You'd have us to paint that Netherese jack-in-the-box should be a blip on the horizon by now. Absolutely. <laughs> We're all risky in our own ways. We stick together anyway, right? That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice. But if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. Like that. What's on your mind? If it should ever come to that, if I ever know I am no longer able to stop it, I will do anything I can to ensure no one but me pays for my mistakes. I will find the remotest place on the surface of Faerun, 
or perhaps far below in the depths of the Underdark. I will await that death alone. I promise I will not betray your trust. You kept me by your side despite the menace that I am. If worse comes to worst, I will be long gone before the curtain falls. Ah, yes. Carsus. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavored to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril, she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god, to know yourself, to be untouchable, to be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel, and with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realize what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistril sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost, and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral, the end of Carsus, and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more, an event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. For a spell, Mistral was reborn as Mistra. Upon her return, the weave returned with her. Now, so many centuries later, I try to follow in the footsteps of Carsus, not to destroy Mistra, but to prove my love for her, and try to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History, repetition, it's the way things go. I question the wisdom of that decision, but so be it. I'll be here in the meantime, idling away the hours. Speak. It is done.
where she is. We don't want any trouble. But you're bloody getting some if you don't fess up. For the love of all that is holy, I've never clapped eyes on your poor sister. Drop the act, hag. You was the last to see me, Rena. Just let her go. Please. Thank goodness you're here, sweetie. I, I don't know what's come over these boys. Auntie Ethel's face creases with false concern. You realize she's lying about seeing this girl, Mayrina. Stop this! We... we won't ask again! Bollocks! You were supposed to rush to my defence, love! Fat lot of good you are! Some advice? You ever darken my door, you'd best have that head bowed and an apology at the ready. Bye-bye now. Bloody hells! She just disappeared. Ain't seen nothing like that before. She could shoot fireworks out of her backside for all I care. The hag has Rena. It's our sister, Marina. She's... well... She was in a bad way after her husband died. Started saying weird things, like how she was gonna bring him back. Next thing, she's gone looking for the hag of all the stupid things to do. And we haven't seen her since. And no good ever came from dealing with a hag. None of this matters, all right? We need to get her back, and fast! Are you joking? I ain't got a clue who you are. No way I'm leaving Rena to you. But, Joel... Not a chance. We're getting her back on our own. Now, come on. chill runs up your spine. You feel like you're being watched. You blink and the wilderness changes. A swamp. Stinking and insidious assaults your senses. glare of a red cap, a fey creature known for its bloodlust, greets you. <sighs> that noise. Is the creature pretending to be a sheep? 
You seize me? <laughs> Nosy, scum sucking, lust ridden little ball bag. Get out! Or I bite tongue. Eat tongue. Oh, delicious tongue. <laughs> I bleed ya. Gotcha. Make many delicious holes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> as well.
Whatever did this could be close. Did you <sighs> rested enough? Now forward. for me. Finger. back in my sails. regards you lifelessly. Mom. 
Hey, soldier. You said you might try cooling me down. Any leads? Yes! I'm waiting. Clever. Might even work. Come here. Mm. I'm dizzy. And you, are you all right? They're still zipping around inside me. I know I can't have much more than that. Not until we found a more permanent solution to the hellfire issue. Mine too. Soon enough, you're going to be mine. But until then, I'll play nice. You have your fun with the angry alien till then. I don't mind sharing. But keep a piece left over for me, hmm? I'd believe you if you said one plus one is seven. Just what I need. Ever since we shared each other's flesh, I've caught you looking at me with lidded eyes. And either like a coward or a fool, you tremble. Perhaps the parasite has weakened you. Or perhaps, perhaps you still long for my taste. I never promised more than a night, though I can't deny the lure of your taste. Sweet, yes, but also bitter as ginger. Tempt me. Like the shield bearer and pikemen must train to march their formation in tandem. Very well. I will claim you once you have taken to rest.
Why would a lesser act spark greater desire in you? Chuk. Overheated grappling that wastefully eats into time better spent resting our muscles. And you've never strangled a berberline with your bare hands. I'll keep your request in mind. Perform well, and perhaps I'll consider it. Enough! I have given you my word. Do not be late. Lazelle appears at your bunk, her eyes raging with desire. You suspect you won't be getting much sleep tonight. Contraptions are hot ticket item. Might not be our last scrap for its sake. Where would you start? And I'd even let you. God, we better find a way to call me off soon. I'm not sure how much more of this I can take. Ah, stranger. Forgive the aroma. You catch a waft of something foul, metallic, and sickly sweet. Powdered iron vine. An old hunter's trick. Most monsters will think twice before making a meal of me. You're a monster hunter? I'm surprised. I thought all Gur were vagrant cutthroats. mystical and dangerous people. We travel the land, never settling in one place. We steal your chickens, curse your crops, seduce your daughters. Your friend here has heard it all, I'm sure. Now, I wish I had half the power settled folk think my people possess. Alas, I am a simple wanderer. A simple wanderer and monster hunter. But I'm no witch doctor or cutthroat. Something terrifying, no doubt. Dragon? Psychops? Kobold? Nothing so dramatic. I'm hunting for a vampire spawn. His name is Astarian, but I fear he's gone to ground. I hope the hag of these lands can help me flush him out, if I can afford her blood price. Not this time. My orders are to capture him. Oh. Uh, and bring him where, exactly? Baldur's Gate. My people wait for me there. I don't know. I'm sure a vampire spawn could still rip out your throat if he felt like it. He is right, unfortunately. They are only weak when compared to their masters. During the day, we have the advantage. But at night, when they hunt, you'll not find a more deadly quarry. We've all survived so far. Let's focus on that. It would still be wise to post guards at night. The threat is real. Indeed it is. We should do something about this threat. Wait, that's it? We're just walking away? A 
Excellent. A Starian? No. It can't be. Make it hurt.
These boots have seen everything. 